Hello and welcome to Better Geology. I'm Andrew Dunning, and I'm going to talk about subduction. Now, plate tectonics is one of the most recent significant advancements in the field of geology, and it's probably best saved for its own video, but I'm going to talk about the Cascadia subduction zone in a future video, and the forces behind it that make it so hazardous to the Pacific Northwest of the United States. So in this illustration here, I have three continental plates. I have a continental plate here, here, and here. Both of these are oceanic crust plates, which means they are made from basalt that is usually relatively young. But this here is a spreading zone. So these two continental plates are being pulled away from each other. And in the middle, between them, we have what's called a spreading zone. As these two plates move apart, magma from below in the mantle, this is the mantle down here, magma from underneath forces its way up and builds new continental crust. Now, at the edge of the continental plate, where it runs into a continental continental plane, the oceanic crust is much denser. It's made of basalt, which is much heavier than the continental crust rocks like granite and diorite and andesite. So as a result, this continental crust goes below it. It's cold, it's very dense, and so it sinks into the very hot, relatively mantle, while the less dense continental crust floats above all of that. So the motion of this, this plate here is this direction, and it's going down. And this plate here can be either staying relatively stationary, it can be moving that way, it could be moving this way. So when these two plates meet, and the oceanic plate subducts below the continental plate in this subduction zone here. So on top of oceanic plates, we get oceanic sediment detritus, debris, ooze, it's called, mud. And this is the stuff that forms limestone, or dolomite, or other oceanic-derived sedimentary rocks. And since the plate is very young here, and much older over here, more sediment is deposited in a thicker layer the older the plate is. So over here, near where the plate is formed, there's very few. On plates such as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, it can be as deep as only a couple of meters in this area, but over near the subduction zone or the edge of the continental plate, it can be thousands of feet thick, the sediment layer. And as it moves and uh, scrapes against the continental plate here, that most of it gets scraped off into this big wedge of gunk. And this is called an accretionary wedge. And so you can see my brown lines here exhibiting the layers in the sedimentary rock. And over here on the continental plate, they are greatly deformed from thrust faults and heat or just being pushed up against each other. Between the continental plate and the oceanic plate is this trench here. And all of the deepest regions on the Earth's oceans are in these oceanic trenches, such as the Marianas Trench or a series of trenches off the coast of Japan or South America, where other subduction zones are. So just to review, this is the spreading zone. These two continental plates are moving away from each other. These are oceanic plates. These are sediment layers. This is the subduction zone, the accretionary wedge. What can be easily mentioned and is applicable to the Pacific Northwest of the United States is that near subduction zones, always occurs volcanoes. As this plate subducts, as it descends into the mantle, it heats up. Oceanic plates, because they're underneath the ocean, they are often riddled with water. Water infiltrates the rock, the crystal structures, and everything, and that lowers its melting point. So, what's called flux melting occurs in this zone here, in which the water in the rock evaporates. It flashes into steam, and that allows other rock around it to also melt. The basalt in this plate will melt, and it will rise up this way, and often it can pool here underneath the continental plate. Magma that's pooling down here finds its way up through the continent, 
forming batholiths and plutons and intrusions of various types. And it will find its way to the surface and erupt in volcanoes. The Pacific Northwest is famous for its volcanoes, including the glacier-carved peaks of Mount Rainier and Mount Hood and especially Mount St. Helens, which last had a catastrophic eruption in 1980. But back to the plate movement. When this plate moves here and they collide and they form the subduction zone, oftentimes there will be so much friction right in this area that the plates will lock. And as the plates lock, the oceanic plate is still moving in this direction. And so friction here forces this plate to deform. Locked continental plates usually deform, so let's say that's the margin of deformation after X number of years. Now this is obviously not to scale and extraordinarily exaggerated, but in the Pacific Northwest, various parts of the state of Oregon and Washington are deformed upwards by plate motion by several millimeters per year. Uh, there's a several locations in Oregon that deform by almost a centimeter per year. When this friction is overcome by the tension of the upper plate, it will slip catastrophically and return to this original shape. And that's what's called a megathrust earthquake. All of the most powerful earthquakes in history that have been recorded have been megathrust earthquakes. And the, the Cascadia subduction zone last had its major earthquake in the year 1700. So when this plate interface slips in a colossal earthquake, it's called a megathrust earthquake. And that happens when the tension of this plate here being deformed overcomes this friction and it slips catastrophically. Now the 2011 Tolku earthquake in Japan was one of these megathrust earthquakes, as was the uh, Alaskan Good Friday earthquake. Both of those had magnitudes over 9.0 and... These megathrust earthquakes are the most powerful earthquakes on the planet. They always create tsunamis because the, as this land uh, returns back to its original shape, it displaces a huge amount of water. And that's why we get tsunamis from megathrust earthquakes. This has been Better Geology. I'm Andrew Dunning. Thank you for watching.